was growing up in the UK, the first house we ever lived in had four apple trees. These apple trees were cooking apples, and every autumn, or fall as you call it, we would pick those apples, my mum would make apple pie, we'd give some to the neighbours, and the rest would just go to waste. I hadn't even thought about that scenario until recently in my job as a food product developer when I've been confronted with the notion that children are growing up in this country without access to apples or similar produce because they're growing up in food deserts. Food deserts are locations which are located one mile or more from a supermarket or grocery store offering a wide range of produce. My first real experience of this was through the Dole Sunshine for All Cities program, who partners with Jackson, Mississippi. Jackson, Mississippi has only 20 grocery stores. That means that there's one grocery store for every 10,000 people. The Dole Sunshine for All City program partnered with the mayor to pilot a number of initiatives including bringing in lo local chefs who then work with the Girls and Boys Club. And they work with the Girls and Boys Club and show them how to cook with fruits and vegetables. And they educate them on nutrition and what good nutrition looks like. In the US, school children only receive eight hours of nutrition education. But it takes 40 to 50 hours to affect a behavior change. Closer to home, since we are talking about a sense of place. In Indianapolis, there are 200,000 residents who are living in a food desert currently. 10,000 of those residents are living without access to a car or a bus, which means they also live in a transit food desert. According to Feeding America, in the state of Indiana, there are 700,000 people who are hungry. Rather heartbreakingly, that means one in seven children. It's for this reason, and for many other reasons, that the White House has recently released a national strategy on hunger, nutrition, and health. And for the first time in 50 years, on the 28th of September, the White House had a conference on hunger, nutrition, and health, bringing together scientists thought leaders, activists, politicians, elected officials, philanthropists, faith leaders, who are all galvanized by a common goal, which is to reduce hunger to zero and also reduce diet-related diseases by 2030. As a food scientist, as an innovator, as a creator, I'm excited about all of the outcomes that are necessary from that conference. But as a human being who believes fundamentally that access to nutrition and access to good nutrition is a human right. What excites me the most is the pillar that deals with improved access and affordability and the pillar that involves improved consumer education and empowerment to make healthier choices. In this improved access and affordability pillar, we'll be looking at a wider eligibility of the SNAP program. We'll be looking at how choosing uh, food that's based on fruit and vegetables will cost less credits. We'll also be looking at more free school meals and more nutritious school meals. Empowering consumers to make healthy choices is something that I'm really passionate about. And we will be looking at a change in food labeling. So when you're in a supermarket or a grocery store and you're faced with a myriad of choices, it will be much easier to navigate towards the healthier snack, the healthier beverage. On the flip side to hunger and insecurity, we need to talk about food waste, which is a sentence I'd never thought I'd say, by the way. According to ReFed, which is a national not-for-profit organization here in the States, which sole purpose is to advance solutions to reduce food waste, in 2019, 35%
of the 229 million tonnes of food available in this country when unsold or uneaten. That equates to 90 billion meals that have gone wasted. Some of that food is donated, but most of that food goes to landfill. It's worth approximately $400 billion. And if that wasn't enough to consider, all the resources used to make that food also go to waste. So that's the growing, the cooling, the processing, the transporting, the storing, the cooking, and the resources used to dispose of the food. It has a huge impact on greenhouse gas emissions. In fact, WeFed estimates that the food wasted in the United States in 2019 contributed as much as 8% to total greenhouse gas emissions. That's just behind the contribution of the states and China as a whole, which are the top two countries that emit greenhouse gas emissions in the world. So while I'm talking about food insecurity on one hand and food waste on the other, you can understand that our food system is a little bit broken, and it probably seems overwhelming, and you're in your seat thinking, well, leaders need to take action, politicians need to do something, policy needs to change. All of those things are happening, but this conference is about sharing ideas. So in my sense of place here today, I'm sharing with you some ideas as to how we can take action locally and how we can make a contribution individually. 37% of that food waste figure that I gave you comes from our homes. That means you and me and everyone in this theater and everyone online listening, hopefully, is responsible for making a huge contribution to that food waste every year, which means that we can take charge, we can take ownership. And I have a few ideas of how we can do that here today. The first thing that we need to do is we need to be more mindful when we buy. What I mean by that is we need to get much, much better at meal planning and buying enough. It's clear from the figures that I've just shared with you that we're all buying too much, right? So we really need to be mindful when we go to that grocery store and we're making those choices. In addition to that, we really need to get a handle on our portion sizes. I'm sure all of you here know that our portion sizes have got bigger and bigger and bigger, right? And it seems to have happened without us realizing. In fact, if you want proof, you should go on the FDA website and it will show you that some years ago, uh, on a pint of ice cream, on the Nutrition Facts label, it would tell you that there, is, there are four servings in that pint. The Nutrition Facts label, by law, needs to reflect how much we eat. It's not a recommended serving size, it's the serving size that we choose to eat. So some years ago, it was four servings with 200 calories per serving. The same, pi uh, same pint of ice cream today has three servings with 270 calories per serving. So we've gone from eating a half a cup of ice cream in a standard serving to two thirds of a cup in a standard serving, almost without realizing. Right? And in parallel to that, all of us are much more sedentary than we used to be. So whilst we're increasing the amount of calories that we're eating, we're burning less. So whilst we're actually creating more food waste, which is worse for the planet, we are also creating a system which is much more unhealthy for us. So let's tackle mindful buying and also mindful eating. When you go to the supermarket or the grocery store, I want you to look for these products which have this certification on them. Upcycle certified means that these products and or ingredients have been made from food assets that would otherwise go to landfill. They've been treated and processed and put back into the food system to create value-added products. 
the certification, which is run by the Upcycle Food Association, actually guarantees you the traceability, the transparency, and the authenticity of the ingredients that go into these products. The Upcycle Food Association is a not-for-profit organization, and it has 226 members who represent businesses that have, divert have diverted over 700 million pounds of food waste. So every time you buy one of these products, you're actually contributing to a reduction in greenhouse gases, which is much better for the planet. You're also supporting businesses that are taking assets, food, nutrition, that would otherwise go to waste and making it more accessible. You will see upcycle food products emerging more and more. This is the future of food. Since 2021, these businesses have received over $700 million worth of investment. 80% of consumers in the US say that the reason that they throw things away at home is that they're confused about expiry dates. According to Refed, date labeling is actually pretty unregulated federally and is regulated by state. So in this country, what you have is a patchwork of regulations which don't necessarily all match together. Date labeling is usually in combination with phrases like best before, use by, sell by, enjoy by, and is actually generally meant to communicate when it's best to consume from a quality point of view, so when it's the best experience, as opposed to food safety. In fact, refed, estimate and have proposed that if we were to standardize food labeling in this country, we would save half a billion pounds worth of food waste worth an economic value of over $2 billion. Outside of the US, there are countries who are making strides in taking different approaches to managing labeling. Where I come from in the UK, retailers are taking the charge. So the supermarkets have decided to take away best before dates on hundreds of products. In fact, Tesco's, the biggest retailer in the UK, announced this week to halve their food waste by 2025. So what can we do together to tackle that? I'd like you to take you back to a time when our parents received milk in milk bottles. So you take a milk bottle, and when you decide whether or not we can drink it or not, the first thing you do is you look at it, right? You see whether or not the milk has separated or not. The second thing you do is you take the, the foil top of the milk and you smell it, and you smell whether or not the milk has gone sour or not. And the last thing you do, if you're really not sure, is you taste a little bit. We've lost the ability to trust our senses. When, it's assess it, when we're assessing food safety and food quality, and we blindly throw food away, which probably is fit for human consumption. So before you throw food away, when you go home today, think about the 700,000 people who are hungry in the state of Indiana. And then think again, before you throw it away, about the contribution that you're making to greenhouse gases and the health of the planet. So my sense of place that I'm sharing with you here today is consciously buying food and mindfully eating. So meal planning and portion control. Support the upcycled movement by choosing products that are actively making a difference in reducing the impact on the planet and reducing greenhouse gas emissions, but also making nutrition and food more accessible by giving it to people rather than giving it to landfill. And before you throw that food away, look, smell, taste, don't waste. Thank you for listening.